on your tuck ride, your examiner is going to ask you to demonstrate ground reference maneuvers such as turns around a point and S turns. This is where you prove your ability to correct for wind drift while maintaining a certain ground track. Now the practical test standards that you're tested by says that you must remain oriented throughout the maneuver, that you understand what altitude to perform this maneuver at, and that you keep your altitude plus or minus 100 feet. So to begin the maneuver, it's best if you start with a tailwind and choose the proper altitude. Also, make sure that you look around the area. You could even ask the examiner to help you look out and make sure that there's no antennas, like cell phone antennas or TV antennas around the area that may become a conflict with your maneuver. Um, you're supposed to choose an altitude between 600 to 1,000 feet AGL. And then once you choose that altitude, then you get plus or minus 100 feet to maintain with, to maintain the guidelines of the practical test standards. So in this area, the field elevation is roughly 1,000 feet. So if we have 1,000 feet field elevation, and we have to choose somewhere between 600 to 1,000 AGL, then our range that we get to choose from should be between 600 feet and 2,000 feet. So let's say that you began the maneuver at 1,800 feet. Then you get plus or minus 100 feet deviation from that. Now you begin the maneuver with a tailwind, and you want to try to find a reference point that's easy to see from all sides while you do a circle around this. And this one we call turns around a point. And what you do is you fly with a tailwind and wait for your wing to be a beam your reference point, a beam meaning, meaning the side. And then once your wingtip is a beam your reference point, you, the object is that you make a nice circle with a constant radius around your reference point. While the wind is blowing you and you have a faster ground speed, you're going to have to begin a steeper bank angle in order to maintain this constant radius. So this side would be steeper. And as you maintain that steeper bank angle, what happens is the airplane's nose is going to end up slightly inside of this turn. You're still coordinated, it's just that you had to hold your bank angle longer to maintain that constant radius. The reason that I point this out is because many students try to misuse the rudder, try to keep the wingtip off the reference point, and that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to stay coordinated, hold our altitude, and just vary our bank angle in order to maintain a constant radius. Once we've come over to this side, now we're coming into that wind. So if the wind is blowing from here, for example, we will um, bank more, less, you know, more shallow. Don't, you don't need to bank as steeply on this side. Because if you continue to bank steeply, the wind would blow you right into your reference point. So this side is more shallow. Now as you come around here and you're directly into the headwind, the reference point will be directly off your wingtip again. And as you continue to shallow out your turn, you're so shallow over here that the nose actually is outside of the reference point and the wingtip will, uh, the, the way you look at your reference point, it'll appear that it's behind your wingtip. And then once you come around here, the wind starts blowing you faster across the ground, so you have to start steepening up your bank angle again. So the object again is to enter at the proper altitude, maintain your altitude plus or minus 100 feet, enter with a tailwind, maintain a constant radius, and stay coordinated, and have situational awareness to know when you've completed one circle. And typically on the exam, the examiner will have you do a circle to the left and then fly a little bit, pick another reference point, and do a circle to the right. The next ground reference maneuver you'd be asked to do would be S-turns. And S-turns also need to be performed by entering with a tailwind our same altitude restriction applies. We have to enter between 600 to 1,000 AGL. So if the field elevation here is 1,000 feet, we have 1,000 plus 
for example, 800 would put us in the proper range, and we might begin the maneuver at 1,800 indicated on our altimeter. And then if we begin the maneuver at that altitude, we get plus or minus 100 feet to hold our altitude throughout the maneuver. So we're going to begin with a tailwind, and then we would like to find something that can be used as a good reference that is perpendicular to the wind. And maybe we find a nice long railroad track that's nice and straight for us. So we enter with a tailwind, and we fly until our wings are perpendicular, correction, parallel that reference point. And once your wings are parallel to that reference point, you're going to begin a turn to the left, a nice coordinated turn. Typically, you start about a 30 degree bank, and then you're, you try to roll back out so your wings end up, you time it to where your wings end up back uh, uh, parallel your reference point. However big you make this half a circle is how big you need to make this half a circle. Since you're flying right into the wind, you should not bank a lot immediately. You're going to have to fly your airplane out here a little bit, out here a little bit, in order to make this size, this size uh, half circle be the same size as this size. If you start to bank immediately, what will happen is this side is going to be significantly smaller, and you may not get your airplane around in time to roll back out with your wings parallel your reference point. So those would be your S terms. You start with a tailwind, you find something that is perpendicular to the wind, and when your win wings are parallel that reference point, you begin a nice coordinated turn, typically about 30 degrees, and then you time it, you time your rollout so your wings are back parallel that reference point. Now be patient as you fly back into the wind because you're going to have to fly into the wind with a slower ground speed, get yourself out in this area before you start increasing the bank angle over here again, and then you time it to roll back out nice and coordinatedly with your wings back parallel the reference point. The other ground reference maneuver is called a rectangular course. Now you could go out and find a field and try to fly a rectangular course around this, but usually the examiner just tell, tests your skills in the traffic pattern. So if you're in the traffic pattern and you're compensating for the winds, the object is to fly, if this is runway one for example, the object is to fly a nice rectangular ground course around the traffic pattern. And if the wind was blowing from a certain angle, let's say the wind was coming for, from here for example, when you take off, as soon as you're airborne, you need to allow your airplane to crab slightly into the wind to maintain your ground track so you don't get blown off course. If the wind is coming from this direction and it's time to turn base, then you would need to crab ever so slightly in this direction so the wind, again, doesn't blow you away because you're trying to fly a nice rectangular ground course. On the downwind, the wind would try to blow you away in this direction so you would have to crab slightly into the wind on your downwind. When it's time to turn base, you're going to have to turn and turn beyond this 90 degree angle because you're trying to, again, maintain this rectangular ground course and not be blown away. And then once you turn final, uh, you may want to delay your turn ever so slightly because in this turn, the wind is going to try to blow you back onto final, and then on final, you would have to crab ever so slightly to maintain your ground course. And then, of course, if the wind was coming from the other side, everything would be backwards. So, if we were taking off runway one, and the wind was from this direction, then once we take off and we're airborne, we would crab slightly into the wind, and then when it's time to turn crosswind, we crab this direction to keep from being blown away. And then on our downwind, we would have to crab slightly in this direction. Now when I'm saying crab, you are coordinated. You're just creating a heading that would allow your airplane to maintain a constant ground track over the ground. So don't be confused between crabbing and flying uncoordinatedly, like with a slip or a skid. Once we make this turn to final, we have to turn really all the way around and start facing in this direction to keep from being blown away. Now also, since the winds are blown from this direction, it will be important to anticipate our turn 
and maybe begin our turn a little bit early because in this turn the wind's going to try to blow you and make you overshoot base the final and then on your uh, final you'd be crabbed into the wind a little bit in order to carry yourself to the runway and then you land a crosswind landing after that. 